Bullhorn. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bullhorn. Howard Lindzen is not able to join us today, so I'm pleased to have Josh Brown, the reform broker, with us. First off, thanks for subbing for me when I've been unable to, to oh, appear. Uh, you know, I've, I was worried that I might be the Wally Pip to your Lou Gehrig, or for a more modern reference, the Drew Bledsoe to your Tom Brady. I'll take the Tom Brady. I, I, uh, I wouldn't blame right. you. And speaking of Brady, his wife, supermodel Giselle, once uh, got into trouble for allegedly saying she wanted to be paid only in euros. I hope she doesn't demand that anymore, but... Do you think she probably wants the Aussie dollar, the loonie, or maybe even the, the kiwi these days? Yeah, Giselle might uh, want to look into currencies that are backed by commodities. Uh, Canadian currency, for example, Australian currency. Uh, that's where the strength is. We had a monster day in risk assets yesterday, stocks, commodities. Uh, the buzz was this is not a stock rally, it's a dollar funeral. If it's a dollar funeral, I guess Ben Bernanke was playing taps. Uh, Qualcomm, the mighty Q. Uh, it's crazy. This was a stock in the late 90s that was a great momentum stock, and then it kind of cooled off a little bit. But do you think Qualcomm, as, as great as a stock it's been recently, can still head higher if the rumors are true that we finally get a Verizon CDMA iPhone in 2011, which presumably would have Qualcomm chipsets in it? I think the Qualcomm is back story is happening. The stock has not done anything year to date, uh, but it's had a huge run since July. Right. Um, the iPhone thing is off in the, in the distance. You might see it launched at uh, CES in Las Vegas yeah, in January. But what's happening now, Qualcomm said on their last conference call, they have 10 different tablets using their Snapdragon chipset. Uh, the tablet story is going to be huge. There are emerging markets that are skipping laptops. They are going straight to tablets. And Qualcomm is a player in every single product. Right, and tablets are not going to be just iPad. Right. Uh, sorry to all you Apple fans. Right. Out there. Another earnings mover that we had this week, Whole Foods, or Whole Paycheck, to all the people that are uh, you know annoyed about how high the prices are. Right. Whole Foods had a great quarter. It wasn't so fantastic to maybe justify a 16% stock jump. I would have thought maybe 3 4 5%. Is this just the mother of all short squeezes? Yeah, you have just this, this stubborn group of shorts that decided a long time ago that a weak economy was going to wreck this company's margins, wreck the demand, and they just will not concede. The stock has gone from 14 to 45 since the bottom of the market. Last quarter, they doubled their net income. Right. A any thought about whether or not Whole Foods results are also maybe a positive from a macroeconomic standpoint? I mean, Starbucks also had a pretty good quarter. Yeah, I think it's the shopping experience. People like being in a Starbucks. They love being in a Whole Foods. It's something they're giving themselves. And then I think the Whole Foods is kind of a microcosm of what's happening in the American economy. You've got a small group of people that are relatively unscathed and they are the shoppers at Whole Foods for the most part. All right, well, to wrap up, Whole Foods is a stock where the shorts are getting killed. However, Washington Post, that's a stock that's also heavily shorted, and they're winning the day right now, despite the fact that uh, some guy named Warren Buffett, I believe, is the largest institutional shareholder of uh, Washington Post. I mean, it's still called the Washington Post, but the, the newspaper business is not driving the train. It's their capital and right. education business. And Apollo, DeVry, other for-profit education companies are getting killed because the Department of Education is showing some backbone and cracking down on, uh, you know, sure. on these companies. Would you be buying Washington Post at this point, even with Buffett as its largest shareholder? You know, Buffett's got a lot of other holdings. If you want to play the game with him, you can look at almost any of the other ones. Um, the education for profit sector is a mass grave. I don't want anything to do with it until there's some clarity on the regulatory front. Uh, I'd rather play along with some of Buffett's other ideas right. uh, than WAPO. You heard it here first. Education stocks and the dollar, dead and buried. We'll end for on now. that. Yes, for now. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a Lazarus-like rise sometime in 2011. But we'll end on that not so cheery.